Good morning, friends. Today we are going to be doing a painting using watercolors or food coloring. Um, also, some homemade paint, that thick stuff that we tried before, and it's really gooey. I thought of an idea for it. So, we're going to start with paper and pencil, and I need you to draw a line straight across the middle of the paper. That line is going to be the horizon line. That is where the sky and the land meet. So above the line is the sky, below the land is the ground. So we're gonna start with the sky and there's a reason we're starting with the sky because the sky is blue and I can do the grass after using some of the blue. Okay, special. So I'm gonna take a cup of water couple of drops of blue. Doesn't that look cool? I love that. I'm going to take my brush, stir, stir, and I'm going to paint the sky. I'm going across, starting at the top, nice and wet and blue. I like it see-through. This looks hard for you guys to see, doesn't it? Let's see if I can't. I have a drip mark. It's okay. I've got my blue. It's very light. So maybe I would have used a little less water. The watercolors will. I'm going to do a cheat. I'm going to wet my brush. Woo! Bad idea, bad idea. Now I have this blue water. To make that turn into green, I can add yellow. Let's see if that works. It should. What I'm finding is things that should work aren't always working so much. It did turn green. Okay. A little bluish green, but it's green. Okay. Or you could always add the green food coloring because that came in the box. Yep, yep. Now we're painting horizontally all the way across the paper. I don't want any scratchy marks. Remember, we always pull our brush. Never push, always pull. Hold your brush on the handle. That's what the handle's for. We're not holding it down here. We're not pinching it. We're not choking him. We're definitely not shoving his head into the ground. We're pulling. Always pull your brush. We're going all the way across. Now, once that dries, we're going to add our poppy flowers. So we're going to have to take a little pause and wait for that to dry. Hi, we're back. So my first grade friends, we are going to do a field of poppies. Not just one poppy, but a whole field of poppies. Now the concept behind this is that we want to show close and far. So my hands right now, this is perfect. They're the same size, right? If I take one and I move it further back, it looks smaller than the one up front. We're going to do the same with flowers. So anything up front is going to be lower on the paper and it's going to look big. Further away is going to be closer to the horizon line where the land and sky meet, where the blue and the green meet, right there on that line. They're going to be tiny flowers. Small, big. 
Got it? So we have some choices here because we are home, it's not school. If we were at school, we would be using tempera paint on top of the watercolor because it's thicker and more solid. I don't have tempera paint at home. What I do have is some homemade flower paint. I'm not loving it, but it works. It does the job. I have a red crayon because poppy flowers are red usually. Traditionally, they're red. And I have this acrylic paint that I don't have red though. I only have orange. So I'm actually going to do all three of these on the paper and we'll see which one works the best. Ready? Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to start with this temper paint. I only have, like I said, it's orange. It's not red. I mean, I could probably put red food coloring in it, but Eh. So I'm going to start furthest away and I'm going to make a tiny dot. And then I'm going to come close, well, whatever material you use. We're going to go a little bit bigger as we get closer. A little bit bigger. Ooh, they're looking more like pumpkins, aren't they? A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, bigger. Bigger. And they're not really flower flower. They're just kind of blobbies. You can make sound effects. We love sound effects. It's always more fun with sound effects. So that's kind of medium, medium, a little bit bigger. That's how the tempera paint would work. So let's try crayon. Can't go wrong with crayon, right? I'm going to do little. A little bit bigger as I get closer. I do like the red much better this way. I do want to make sure I'm getting really dark though. No scratchy marks. So color it in really well. And we get bigger as we get closer. Okay, so it's just a, <coughs> kind of like a cloud, but it's red and it's on the ground, which makes it now a flower. So we're going from big, medium, small, itty bitty tiny. Now my third choice that I'm offering up is the homemade paint. I need a smaller brush. This is so gross. Okay. Let's see how we do. Tiny. Oh. Now load it on. It's kind of like puffy paint. Honestly. We'll go a little bit bigger. Oh. Much better if you're working on the table, I think, rather than the wall. But these are strange times, and we do what we got to do to get by. Hmm. Still not loving the homemade paint. All right? Now, a fourth option that I might do would be marker. I could do marker. I didn't even think of that. Hold on. Aha. A tiny red. A little bit bigger. 
color it in. Now, if you're going to do this with the marker, make sure there's something underneath your paper because it will go through, especially when you're coloring in. We got to get bigger as we get closer to the bottom or closer to the viewer. So our goal here is to show depth and space. We're going to get bigger. Keep them circular. So when we do see these lines with the marker, that's the thing about marker. You can see the lines of where you drew up. So if you're going to do it, keep them circular. We don't want straight, jagged lines in our flowers. So keep making little circles inside. It still has... And we're going to have some white spots with the marker because my marker is a skinny one. It's not a big, chunky one. We have, we have close is big, small is far. Then I have this big, beautiful sky up there. That's where we're going to be writing some information like in memory of in for Memorial Day. Um, when the paint does dry, we are going to take a black crayon or marker because if your crayons are like mine, you can never find the black crayon. So I don't have a black crayon. I've got every other color. No black crayon. Go figure. So we're going to take the black marker or crayon. I can't really go over here because the paint isn't dry, but I can go over here. And we're going to put a black dot in the center. The dot gets smaller if the flower is smaller. The dot gets bigger if the flower is bigger. Okay? Now on crayon, the markers aren't really going to stick. It's going to wipe right off, kind of. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Yes, it does wipe off. So you're going to want to find that black crayon. Sorry, guys. Folks, enjoy making your field of poppies in memory of someone who has served. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Be creative. I'll talk to you soon. Hi friends, we're back with our field of poppies. So we left off right about here and we started talking about putting the black dot in the center of all of our flowers. Now this picture here, I used paint. I only had orange paint, poppies come in orange. I used crayon, I used the salt homemade paint, which turned out a little pinkish. And here I used Sharpie markers. So you get to choose what material works best for you and what you have available at home because we don't all have everything. You could probably even come up with a few things that I don't have. What I'm going to do now is add the black dot to the center of all of my poppy flowers. So hopefully you can see where we're going with this. Now, the bigger the flower, the bigger the dot. I'm using, I happen to have a little bit, not a lot, of black paint. The dot gets smaller with the smaller flower. It gets bigger with a bigger flower. I'm just using a Q-tip. And I'm not worried about it being perfect because the center of the flower is not perfect. Itty bitty, a little bit bigger, a little bigger, a little bit bigger, a lot bigger. And I'm going to keep it going. Now, paint is not going to stick to the crayon, so you're going to have to use crayon on that one. Part of all this is figuring out what works 
and what doesn't. I'm in the same boat as you, my friends. Not everything is working the way we had hoped. Sometimes we got to try and get out of our easy peasy comfort zone here and try something new. Itty bitty dot. So now all of my poppies have a dot except for my crayon ones. I have to get a crayon for that. Step two, you're going to add stems. They don't have to go all the way to the bottom. They're just gonna go a little bit. If you hit a flower, stop. We're showing overlapping. We're showing that things are smaller as they get further away. Oh, I never colored that one in. I'll have to go back. Oh, I got a drip mark. I don't need to get carried away. I don't need chunky stems. In fact, the stem of a poppy is very thin and fragile. They're a very delicate little flower. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a big puffy white cloud. So I'm going to actually just use white paper. And on my white paper, I'm going to write a message. Now, a field of poppies is significant for our veterans. Veteran is someone who has served our country in the military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. And they have given the ultimate sacrifice of their lives for your freedom and your liberty. The poppy flower is significant from a poem called In Flanders Fields, where the poppies had grown. When you watch the slideshow, you will see and read the poem. Up here in the sky, we are going to be putting a white cloud and in it, we will write the words, thank you to our veterans. In this time, we have many people who are serving our country for our freedom, for our liberty, for our health. They're not just in the military. If you would like to say thank you to our service workers, our healthcare providers, you are more than welcome to. Have a great day, stay safe, and remember those who have given for you.